guys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, you know, <laughs> reality, reality always wins. It's like uh, if you go into a casino, the house eventually always wins. Well, it's the same thing. Reality always wins. You can try to tell men that uh, Miss Krusty here, uh, Megan Rapinoe with her purple hair, is strong and stunning and brave and ushers in the next generation of beautiful women. Uh, but not only do men disagree, but it turns out women disagree too. Uh, so uh, we, we need a lot less of the purple hairs and more of the, more of the model here that you see on the right. Uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because a couple of years ago, you know, Victoria's Secret, men like, men like thin, but, you know, slightly curvy, good-looking women who are beautiful in the face, very symmetrical, have normal, non-poisonous colored hair, uh, shaved armpits, two arms, two legs, the rest of the things that we like. And, of course, Victoria's Secret moved away from that. And, uh, you know, at one point, their stock was, was quite high, uh, right around 70 bucks a pop. And as you can see here, it's fallen off all the way down to 60% off of their market highs. And it's fallen 60% down to about $17 and change, almost 18 bucks. Why? Because they're trying to tell men and women what to find sexy. Mostly men, let's face it. Now, Victoria's Secret's uh, ads are for women. And of course, women do a lot of the shopping there. But ultimately... Who decides what is, what, is, what is desirable on a woman? Who decides what looks good on a woman? Men. I mean, sure, women can buy it for themselves, um, but it's, it's mostly men because women want to feel sexy, and when they want to feel sexy, it's because they want to entice and lure men in. So men, ironically, are, even though they're not the ones directly buying this stuff, they're the ones that are looking at the ads, they're the ones that are looking at women and overall saying, like, I don't, like, women are not going to buy this stuff from Victoria's Secrets, and men are not going to find women that look like this attractive. So uh, from the Daily Mail, uh, Victoria's Secret, uh, they say is Victoria's Secret, but they are. Victoria's Secret's ditching its feminist makeover. Lingerie brand is returning to its hypersexualized roots after scrapping catwalk angels for plus-sized and transitioning models amid report sales have plunged by another 5%. Now, it's just not 5% off the top, remember. It's like 5% here in like the last year. Or less than that, actually. Because if you look, they did this flip over uh, just about a year ago. I forget when they picked up Megan Rapinoe. But as you can see, things started falling off a cliff shortly after that. Uh, they say, uh, the lingerie empire has seen a drop in sales since overhauling its image by replacing its traditional angel supermodels with more diverse models, including soccer player Megan Rapinoe and transitioning model of Valentina Sampuro. Uh, Business of Fashion reporter Kathleen Chen noted the movie, The Move, gained favorable, favorable reviews online but never translated into sales. This is, what, this is good news, and, and one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this. You can put up the billboards of the craziness, the, you know, the men that are pregnant and the women that I don't know, or now men or whatever. You can put up those billboards. You can put the billboards of the 300-pound women that look like Lizzo and, and put them in, you know, little underwear and all that stuff and say stunning and brave all day long. It doesn't matter. That's not going to translate to sales. And now that the free money is going away because interest rates are so high, companies can't just go out and get free money. You know, when you had a 0% interest rate on a business loan, business is struggling, they go out and they say, we'll just get extra cash and we'll keep ourselves propped up. Well, you can't do that anymore. And they predict by next year, something like 65% of all companies are zombie companies. Now, that means they're going to have massive layoffs. They're going to have businesses collapsing left and right. You're going to see unemployment shoot through the roof. But by then, if you correct course on, you know, the interest rates and everything like that, it's too late. And this is why it's, it's kind of a very bad time right now because we're, we're very much in the calm before the storm. And so all these businesses that have gone on the woke train and the stunning and brave and Hollywood that is made up, well, they're starting to find out now this isn't going to make us money. And they might get all the clicks and all the likes 
and all the love on social media and the validation and, oh, stunning and brave, and you go strong girls, but no one's buying the crap. And that's key. And that's why I think all of this is going to come to a crashing end at the same time the economy falls off the cliff. Because, you know, we here in America, we joke around about first world problems like, oh, you know, uh, I couldn't afford the new iPhone this year, so I'll have to use last year's $1,000 iPhone that I bought last year. That is definitely a first world problem, right? But, but what's going to happen is things are going to get really, really tough. And, and I think all of these issues go away because it'll be less about pay attention to me because, you know, I'm a girl that doesn't shave her armpits and this, this is the new 2022 trend. And that's going to be in the New York Post. And the stories are going to be like, hey, uh, this group of people is like starving and they can't afford to pay their bills and unemployment's 15%. And reality will wipe out all this craziness really quick. Why? Because just like casinos and the house always wins, reality always wins. Uh, they say bosses are now looking to bring back the brand's um, sexiness according. Let me shrink that window so it's centered because I know if you have OCD, it will drive you crazy. Let me fix that for you real quick. There you go. I know when I look at that, that would bother me. <laughs> Uh, bosses are looking to bring back the brand's sexiness, according to a report by CNN on Tuesday. Victoria's Secret insists that its new direction had nothing to do with its inclusive, inclusivity efforts. As one exec said, sexiness can be inclusive. Okay, well, depends on the, in the how inclusive they are. Uh, the brand's revenue is projected to reach $6.2 billion for 2023, 5% drop from last year and even lower than 2020 when the brand made 7.5. Yes, you definitely need to bring this back. Now, here's the thing about diversity, okay? There are guys, I, I think it's fine to have this gal on there and then have a pretty Asian woman and then have a pretty black woman and then have a, I don't know, pretty it, 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 Italian and then Latino and Middle Eastern woman. I, like, you can, that's fine. You can even have, like, the thin, thin, rail thin girls that, you know, have six packs and they're 108 pounds. And have some girls with some curves. There's a lot of guys out there that get like girls and curves. But to try to say that, hey, look, this, you know, this girl with purple hair and, and that weighs 300 pounds, like that's not hot, right? I mean, universally, I think there are plenty of guys that would say, hey, you know what? These women are pretty hot. You know, they're pretty hot. They may not be exactly what you want. But, but again, there's not too many dudes that are out there that kind of look at this gal and say, that's that's what I want. Yes, there are some chubby chasers, but it is it is not the the vast majority of men. I'm not going to read down through the rest of this because who cares? But and this is interesting. So this is from Dom uh, Lucra, uh, and he's uh, he he puts up some interesting posts. I have to mute this because of the background music. I'm pretty sure it's copyrighted. But this is the ad that they. Oop, that's not muted. This is the ad they just came out with, and what do we see? We see. This girl's definitely like different shaped and then this girl and they're shorter and taller. I don't like how they stand. That looks kind of weird. Um, but this is their newest ad, but, but there's a problem. And do you see what the problem is? They're trying to relate to like the Gen Z millennial type young people where this is not, I mean, this is underwear, sure, but it's not like, lingerie or anything super attractive. This is relatively boring stuff. And if, if I told you this was like a JC Penny commercial, if I, I said, Oh, this is JC Penny's newest commercial. You'd be like, yeah, okay. If I said, I don't know, this is Kim Kardashian's newest line of underwear. You'd be like, yeah, okay. Th there's nothing that they need to bring back the, because what made, what made Victoria's, Victoria's Secrets like so immensely popular with everybody is because they had good quality stuff and it was a little more expensive, but it was also really, really kind of sexy stuff and they put it on the women and paraded it around. Well, without that, you're saying, hey, we're just like JCPenney except we charge more. Like this is not, this could be a JCPenney's ad. And, and I want to, I, Really, the reason why I want to do this story is because it's it's not so much about Victoria's Secret and all that stuff. It's that no matter how much you try to break reality by telling people what is right and wrong and what they should like and shouldn't like, it's not going to work. And people are just going to make fun of it. Yes, you're going to get the, 
the weirdos out there that give you all the likes on on the interwebs, but it's it's not going to it's not going to move the needle. And same thing here, you know, this is from Publica, Maxim, which used to be a men's magazine uh, that that had interviews with hot girls and interviews with sports stars and and interviews with kind of meaningful men. Well, they sold out and went woke. And what happens? They hire a bunch of women as their editors and their copy editors and their story writers. And now you see Maximum, uh, Maxim Australia names uh, a transitioned dude to female as a football coach in the hottest 100 list. And here's the thing. Here's a picture of him. Sorry, that's, you, that's not hot. You can say all you want that it is. And you can say, oh, that what, a, sorry, you're going to tell me this is one of the 100 hottest people in the world or Australia? Good luck to you. But again, there's, what's happening is there's only so far people will go. Now, the left will still go right on board with this stuff, but no one else is. And lastly, ESPN, which is part of Disney, what did they do? They went in all for the Bravo Lima Mike. They, they went all in on politics and they went in on all on, on uh, you know, decorating the field and working with the NFL to, to bring in all the political stuff. And this is like, this is just from what, what today ESPN profit plunges another 20%. And the reason why I say another is because it's already been falling off a cliff. It's already been falling off a cliff. They got into politics and the other thing they've done is they're bringing in female they'll they're bringing in female anchors to talk about men's sports. I'm sorry. Look, it, if if there's an analyst that, you know, a 14-year-old boy that maybe played baseball in high school and tried it in college but didn't make it, but he's been following f- baseball all his life, I'll listen to him comment on things if he knows his stats and he he knows about the game. But what I I really like listening to is former players, I, as commentators. I really like listening to somebody that, that played the game, was in the locker room that says, hey, uh, you know the coach is back there saying this right now. Uh, they're down 20 points, but they're not out of this yet. The coach is probably saying this. We think he's going, and they're going to move to a like a nickel defense. They'll, do, they'll put four on the offensive line, and they'll go with a, two linebackers. Like That's the kind of stuff a lot of guys want to hear when they listen to sports commentary. They don't want to hear from Becky, the hot 28-year-old that's never played a game of football and maybe he's only studied a little bit or watched it as a casual fan for years. That's not who guys want to listen to sports about. But because they need to be inclusive and all this other stuff, they're bringing in female reporters. And I'll tell you right now, like if there's a if there's an analyst or a female that's never played their game or anything like that, I don't listen to what they say. That's usually an opportune time for me to go refresh my beer and and, and grab a bite to eat. So you can only go so far. You can only go so far in telling men and women, but again, you can only go so far telling men what is sexy, what is beautiful, how they should think, uh, what they should find attractive. You, you, I mean, you can say that all you want, but it's not going to change. And when men don't find something attractive, women don't find it attractive, especially when the women are mostly buying this stuff for their man. And if women are walking by and they see a, you know, a lumpy 300 pound dude or a woman, well, or, or a dude dressed like a woman, or you see Megan Rapinoe with her hairy armpits and her attitude in the window, uh, I think a lot of women are like, yeah, that's not really sexy. And Victoria's Secret's gone cheap and it's gone inexpensive and no one wants it anymore. So they're trying to back out. All these companies are going to learn. And, and that's the, the good news. And I know I already said this once, but I I really want to drive this home. That's the good news about this stuff. Financing is going to get tight. The global, our economy is going to get, I mean, it's already really bad. Like we're digging a hole two and a half trillion into the hole every year. And the only way you can keep up with with the, and I'm not an economist, but I do know this much. The more money you print, the less value your dollar has. The less value your dollar has, the higher the prices go. Okay, that's inflation. Well, what happens to bring down inflation is usually you have to bring up the interest rates to kind of counteract so that 
people say, hey, you know what? If I keep this money in the bank, instead of buying these things that I want, if I put it in a bank account, I can get 8% on my money. Or if, if you put it, say, in, in bonds and, and things like that. And again, I'm not a finance guy, so if I get any of this wrong, please understand. Um, but it's, the idea is those high interest rates make you say, oh, a car, I have an 8% interest rate on a loan. Oh, a house, I have 8% interest rate. Uh, oh, I put this in the bank and maybe I can get that 8% interest rate on my savings. Uh, of course, you won't get that right now because they don't do that much anymore. But that's the idea of it. And the idea is, okay, we'll slow it down. Well, there's a problem. The government won't stop printing the money so the inflation keeps going up regardless if people stop spending it or not. Even if the people stop spending it, a lot of people are not buying much anymore. The housing market's frozen. Interest rates are going through the roofs. People aren't buying cars. People aren't buying houses. But the inflation's still going up. Why? Because the government keeps spending it. And until the government stops spending it, we're going to keep being in a bad place. Well, these businesses, number one, are going to get hit because people are not going to be buying at the same rates. They can't afford to anymore. Number two, when they get in trouble, they're going to try to borrow some money, but they can't because of the 8% interest rate. What happens? Everything comes crushing down. And when it all comes crushing down, the people that are complaining about being mis, you know, mislabeled, the people complaining that it's not stunning and brave, the people complaining that where's my, my diversity, they're going to be complaining, how am I going to feed myself? I can't afford my rent anymore. Um, my utility bill is three times what it was. Then, now they're going to have something to complain about. Then all the first world problems go away. They can't complain about them anymore. They'll be complaining about real life. And we'll see what happens then. I, I think this, you know, at least for the United States, uh, elections do have consequences. And if you look at the most recent administrations and what they're doing, it's going to put us in a world of hurt. The, 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 the weak men are here, and they're just cranking the machine on the hard times. We're going to pay for that pretty soon. But at least with companies like, uh, at least with companies like Victoria's Secrets, maybe they're starting to figure that out. Uh, guys, I'll leave it there for you on YouTube. For those of us on, on, uh, over here on Locals, I'm going to do a dating profile of the day, and we'll see you in the next one.